Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another exciting edition of this wonderful program, Ramadan's Pulse. I feel like we should rename this like the travel show because we're traveling all around this little globe. I've taken you all around this place. I took you to Egypt where we were based. I took you to South Africa, to Bosnia. I didn't even charge you guys. We got you guys like in first class flying all around the world. We even took you to sad places where there's tragedies like in Burma, in Syria. And may Allah help the Muslims there. Uh, we've traveled to England, to Denmark. We've traveled to a lot of countries. I hope to travel to my friend Samir's favorite country, Greece. I'm not going to let you know if we're going to go there yet or not. Let me just give you the contact information uh, right now. Uh, the phone, of course, uh, is 002-0238-555-248 or 9. Please give us a call and tell us about Ramadan in your country. It's 002-0238-555-248 or 249. Of course, Please send me an email, pulse at hooded.tv. That's pulse at hooded.tv. I check those. I respond to them personally. Inshallah, I promise I will respond to your email. Uh, Facebook as well. You guys know the URL. It's on the bottom of the screen. It's basically, uh, facebook.com slash hooded.tv. Don't forget the three W's in the beginning. Of course, Skype. Uh, Skype, our, 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 our uh, number there is Huda underscore TV. And we actually have a very, very special guest via Skype today. Uh, you guys have to stay tuned, though. I'm not going to tell you who it is. He's a very prominent American uh, uh, da'i, as you say, Muslim preacher. So it'll be fun to have him, inshallah. I'm not telling you guys what country we're going to today. It's a very special country. It's one of the most important countries in the Muslim world. Many of us have traveled there, but we don't live there. It's uh, on a peninsula. It's a kingdom, but that's all the hints I'm giving. I'm actually joined by a very special guest who has traveled to this country before, uh, Brother Ahmed Abdulhilla. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much for joining us, brother. You're actually from... Tell us what country you are from, actually. I'm from Egypt. You're actually from Egypt. What part of Egypt are you from, brother? Whereabouts in Egypt? Fr from Upper Egypt. From Upper Egypt. Okay, great. They are the best people of Egypt, the Upper Egypt. Thank <laughs> So we're going to be speaking about a country that you travel to. But before we tell them what country that is, we want you guys to check out this report, this video. It's a really breathtaking and beautiful video. So check it out, enjoy, and stay tuned. <laughs> Mr. Rih, most where it's in Saudi, in Jeddah, for example. In Jeddah, there's so many beautiful reciters around in Jeddah. Also, there's Mecca Medina's nearby, so it's just a, a as we call it, it's like a garden. Each day you go for a different flower. You know, one day you go for this reciter, that reciter. You really enjoy it from that perspective. So definitely, I think each country has own taste and flavor. And and some, but so far my favorite parts of Tarawih definitely will be will be in Jeddah definitely. <laughs> Some people are very productive in Ramadan, meaning that they really take Ramadan.
do in Ramadan. Sometimes you have a group of stars. Sometimes you have uh, we take food. We go to poor areas and we sort of do feeding on the ground. This is in the UK, also in Saudi. It depends on the on the sort of the, the, the season and what, what we plan for Ramadan. Sometimes it's Ramadan for Dawah. Dawah is a brilliant time for Dawah in Ramadan because you have people asking you questions and especially your neighbors. We had a had a Ramadan drive for the neighbors where we take a postcard, put a Happy Ramadan, and from your Muslim neighbor. And we used to pass it around to those around in the UK, for example. So these are just ideas to help inspire those around us to, to use Ramadan as an opportunity, as a season for Dawah and to really open up the conversation. Because some people are like, what are you doing? Why are you not eating? All the it's a perfect time to make the most of that month, inshallah. Well, of course, we're talking about the land of the two holy mosques, Saudi Arabia. I respect any country that has La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah on their flag. And so that was, is amazing, uh, amazing video. Brother, Brother Ahmed Abu Hilla, you've had the honor to travel uh, and perform Omar, haven't you? Yeah. When did you perform Omar? Wh which, uh, which Islamic month? Uh, last year in Shaban. In Shaban, okay, wonderful, mashallah. And uh, I, I, I guess this was an, an amazing feeling for you. Uh, I have an amazing uh, feeling uh, when I went to Saudi Arabia, KSA, uh, first went to Medina. First went to Medina. Uh, then went to Mecca. So you spent some time in Medina and to Mecca. Before you get more into your story, I want you to tell us in detail about Mecca and Medina. But before we do that, I would like to go to our Skype call. We have a very special guest. He is an assistant professor at uh, King Abdulaziz University in the KSA. He's an American revert to Islam, Dr. Yahya Kazalis. Excuse me for mispronouncing your name, Dr. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our show, Ramadan's Pulse. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm doing great. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for joining us, brother. Please tell us a little it's bit. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Please tell us briefly a little bit about Ramadan and the KSA. Why is it so special? Ramadan in Saudi, why is it special? <laughs> Let me count the ways. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Jeddah, Medina, Mecca, the Harameen. Um, it is a tremendous blessing, mashallah, tabarakallah, to be here in the kingdom, to have a masjid at every corner of your streets. Uh, it's, it's a tremendous opportunity, and it's, it's special in, in any way that you can possibly think of, mashallah, tabarakallah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yekha, for, uh, for that insight. Uh, what can we say now, talking about Ramadan specifically, what can we tell people who perhaps have missed out on the first 19 days? Uh, what motivation can we give them going into the last 10 days? And I wanted to apologize for the guests and uh, also to our host here, uh, Malik, because I, I think I'm throwing a monkey wrench in and making it difficult. Um, Not you know, enough, we, we had a We had a certain schedule, but I wanted to apologize. I just want to give a motivation. Um, oh, go ahead. For my, myself personally, for me, for me firstly, then I'll see how, because I'm the one who needs it. And secondly, for my dear brothers and sisters around the globe, the viewers, many people, they feel that we are, because today, August 7th, 20 days in almost. Today's the 19th of Ramadan. And many people feel that they have missed out on the opportunity. The famous hadith, I think everybody's heard it, when the Prophet والسلام, ascended the minbar, and he said, Amin three times. And they asked him, why did you say Amin? And one of, he said, because Jibreel came to me and made a dua, three specific dua. And one of them, was with respect to Ramadan. Jibreel, he said, رَغِمَ أَنْفُ الرَّجُلُ دَخَلَ عَلَيْهِ شَهْرُ رَمَضَان ثُمَّ خَرَجَ فَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ He said, this is from Jibreel, he said, doomed is the one who is alive throughout the month of Ramadan. That Ramadan enters and then exits. And yet this person did not manage to get his sins forgiven. Let him be doomed. Because Ramadan, we have such an opportunity, my dear brothers and sisters. The doors, the gates of forgiveness are open as wide as they can be. So many opportunities. Man qama Ramadana imanan wahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. Right? Man qama Ramadana imanan wahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. Whoever stands the nights of Ramadan, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, 
We've all heard these hadiths. You have your sins forgiven. So many people feel they missed out in my last message here. I want to say, you did not miss out. I have glad tidings. Maybe you were miskeen and lazy and you feel you missed 20 days and Ramadan's almost over. You did not miss out is my final message at this point. Because the Prophet وسلم, he said what? He said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ he said, your actions are judged according to their endings. So how are you going to end Ramadan? Maybe you're crawling right now. But when you come to the finish line of Ramadan, do you want to be crawling or do you want to be sprinting? My message is to try to encourage us with this hadith that your actions are judged by your endings. You can have your entire month of Ramadan, insha'Allah ta'ala, judged on how you end this month. So bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, we all end it sprinting. Jazakum Allah khair. Wa jazakum. Thank you, Shaykh. Having said that, uh, Shaykh, can you, can you tell us a little bit about the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the last 10 days? Absolutely. Jazakum Allah khair. Uh, Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim, they reported from Aisha radiallahu anha that she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stay up during the last 10 days and that he would wake up his family. And in this particular narration, she said, ahla, that he would wake his family wajadda the meaning in that he would prepare and he would tighten his izar. It's a metaphor, if you can see me, but a person who if they want to go do hard, strenuous work, hard labor, they're going to tighten their shoe, right? Before they go do that hard labor. And he would tighten his izar and he would prepare to go to work for those last 10 days because he knew the opportunity that was present during Ramadan. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he knew the opportunity present in those last 10 days. So the message here, do whatever you can do brothers. End it properly. Read those extra pages of Quran. Give in sadaqah. Even, even give if all you have is a smile. A smile as we know is a sadaqah, is a charity towards your mother, towards your fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. Work on your akhlaq. Given these things, work in these 10 days the hardest that you can is my message. Thank you, Sheikh Yahya, for those words of wisdom. Uh, briefly, Sheikh, my final question. What is this forgiveness contract that you are so well known for? Can you share that with the viewers? <laughs> I, I can. I mentioned this to people. Whenever I give a talk, at this, I, I try to call it my motivational speech about <laughs> ending Ramadan. Um, I talk about the forgiveness opportunity, and I print up if you can see this, I don't know, I, I print up a forgiveness contract. Okay. I say, imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pr presented to you with this option, a forgiveness contract where he said, here's the deal. You work, you give me, Allah says, 20 hours of hard, strenuous labor. He gives you the contract. You sign it. You give me 20 hours and I will give you a clean slate. I will forgive you of all of your sins. And I ask the audience, the listeners, the viewers, who would sign up for that contract? Who would run and sign that deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Each and every one of us would. We would jump at the opportunity. This is the epitome of a no-brainer. But what is my message? We already have such a forgiveness contract from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's right here. It's right here. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Whoever prays during the night of Qadr with Iman and while hoping for the reward will have his previous sins forgiven. So why did I use that number of 20 hours? We have 10 days left, brothers and sisters. Some hadith say the night of Qadr is on the 27th. Others say to search for it during the last 10 nights, during the odd nights of the last 10 nights. But here's the message. You have 10 nights. Let's say tarawih is 2 hours a night. You do the math. This is simple. 10 times 2, 20 hours. We all said that we would sign up for that contract. I'm sure if you're listening, you raise your hand. The Prophet وسلم, with Allah's promise has guaranteed you this contract for the one who does this. 
So who was ready and willing to invest into their hereafter, into their akhirah, to get that clean slate and to sign up for that forgiveness contract? The Masajid brothers and sisters here in Jeddah, over in Australia, back home in America, they should be packed if we are truthful. If you are truthful and you were ready to sign up for that 20-hour contract, the masajid should be packed during these last 10 days. Insha'Allah ta'ala, go grab that reward because it is yours for the taking. That is my famous or now potentially famous forgiveness contract. <laughs> Does that Thank you so much for your time. You certainly motivated me, and inshallah, I'm sure you motivated many viewers to take these last 10 days, uh, seize them, and take advantage of them, and, and seize this opportunity. Absolutely. So thank you for your time. I certainly look forward to having you on more programs in the future as well. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum, doctor. Thank you much. Nope. That's uh, Dr. Yahya Johnson Kazalis, uh, Assistant Professor at King Abdul Aziz University in the KSA. Thank you, brother, as well, for joining us today in the studio. Uh, before we had that wonderful phone call, uh, with the Sheikh, we were, I wanted you to speak about your experiences in Mecca, excuse me, in Medina, because you traveled yes. to Medina first, right? Go ahead. <coughs> yeah, when I reached it, uh, in Medina, I felt that, uh, I really felt that I am beside our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, this is a great feeling that you are in Tiba or Al Medina Al Munawwara, the enlightened uh, city of our Prophet. Uh, there, uh, I think, weather is uh, not hotter than, it's very hot, but it isn't hotter than uh, Mecca. And people of Medina are so, so kind. When you ask uh, anyone about anything, uh, he can show you, he can direct you. Uh, uh, in Medina, there are a lot of, uh, we call, rawhaniyat, from our souls. Yeah, great feeling is from our really from our souls, uh, especially when uh, we uh, pray or say pray, saying prayers together in the, uh, the uh, Prophet Mosque. Salatul Salam. How did you feel in this mosque, brother? Oh, I, uh, when I uh, entered or get, in or in get into this uh, mosque, I felt that I uh, cried. I, I, uh, f for the first time, w I, I went uh, to many mosques, but for the first time when I uh, get, uh, got into uh, the Prophet uh, Mosque, oh, I yes. saw my tears running from my eyes. I don't know why. Uh, I, I said that uh, I, I didn't believe myself when I uh, was there in the Prophet of our Mosque, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So describe now Mecca. What was your feeling when you first entered Mecca? Uh, when I reached uh, Mecca after Medina, first our, uh, our journey first to Medina, then to Mecca. Uh, when I reached Mecca and uh, got into the Kaaba, Al Bayt Al Haram, uh, I was very happy. But at the same time, I felt that uh, my uh, tears were like a river. I don't know why <laughs> I'm a sinful. I don't know why. Uh, I came here to repent. I don't know why. Uh, I asked myself many questions. Uh, this is the, the Kaaba, all the Muslims, and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are uh, uh, going around, you say, crossing uh, this uh, uh, holy uh, rituals. Uh, but I uh, think uh, and I hope all Muslims should uh, visit these uh, secret places because uh, now in our life all Muslims or some of them uh, look carefully into their work in uh, worldly things, not uh, for uh, uh, sacred things. Yeah, of course. Yeah, ex excellent point. Do you still remember the moment when you first saw the Kaaba? When I saw the Kaaba... Do you remember which gate you walked into? Which, do you uh, remember all the details about uh, it? From, from the gate, about the gate, yeah. the gate of King Abdulaziz. Okay. In front of the uh, hugest the clock. Yeah, the big, yeah the, uh, in front of the clock. And what, 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 what did you feel immediately when you saw the Kaaba? Uh, 
I can't describe my feeling. It's just indescribable, really, isn't it? Uh, I can describe it as uh, a feeling that I have never been uh, watched it or seen it before. Yeah. This is my description. SubhanAllah. If you try it again or you have this experience, uh, you, can, you cannot uh, describe this feeling. Uh, if anyone go to uh, Mecca especially and saw the Kaaba, uh, he must uh, cry. Allah, samihni Allah. Uh, and uh, such supplications or invocations like this. Of course, yeah. Just to share my story with you a little bit, brother. When I made Umrah, I remember being in Medina. And it was actually my birthday, although I don't celebrate birthdays. But I remember this. And I remember to myself, subhanAllah, Allah had taken me from a foreign country as a non-Muslim living in America. He chose me to be Muslim. And now he put me in Medina, praying in the Prophet's mosque, subhanAllah. So this brings tears to my eyes, you know. And I still remember going to Me Mecca for the first time. You know, when I went to Mecca, I didn't see beautiful mountains or grass or trees or exotic rainforest. The landscape isn't beautiful, actually. But something about it, when you enter into it, it's a beautiful valley. You feel something special in your heart that you, ha you, could, you will never experience uh, anywhere else. I'm from California in San Francisco. It's a very beautiful places. Mecca itself, I didn't find it to be very beautiful, but it's the best place on earth because Allah has blessed this land and put something special in it. Uh, uh, there, so I think it's a beautiful, for sure, it's a beautiful uh, t uh, time. Although I made my uh, my uh, Umrah in uh, in in the springtime, you made yours in Shaban, so I think it was very busy at this time, wasn't it? Yeah, and very hot. And very hot, yeah. Yes, it was yeah. a summer month, Li like uh, this summer, like this summer. Oh, yeah. Oh, mashallah, brother. We actually have a Skype call all the way from India. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, I'm sorry, it seems like uh, the phone cut off there. I apologize, you guys. Let me just remind you to give us a call on Skype and share your memories of the land of the two holy mosques. Uh, tell us your memories of visiting uh, Mecca and Medina, of Omar and Hajj. Give us a call now and share those beautiful feelings with us. Tell us what you first saw when you saw the, 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 the Kaaba, when you first entered the, the Grand Holy Mosque in Mecca. And please uh, tell us about your feelings uh, in Medina as well. The director tell me, is telling me we have a, a call on Skype again. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Brother, what is your name and where are you calling from? My name is Badr. I'm from near about uh, Al Khaz, Biyad. Ah, mashallah. Brother, tell us about your experiences in uh, Mecca yeah, and Medina. Yeah, I'm very nice, marvelous, super. It's very nice. T tell I us. Actually, actually, I belong to India, but uh, I am uh, living in uh, North uh, for what purpose? Uh, it's uh, very nice. And uh, Madina also, Madina is a very marvelous and every, uh, every people are working over there, well mannered and uh, at that time is very nice. Also, Mashallah, brother, have you had the opportunity to make Umrah? Inshallah, last week and last week. Oh, great, tell us about it. Was it really, I'm sure it was very crowded, Umrah and Ramadan, right? Yeah. I'm sure it was. How is difficult is it making Umrah while you're fasting? But very much better, no problem. It's easy. Yeah, mashallah. Although, did you perform the rituals this after? Time, this time is too much crowd. Alhamdulillah, too much crowd this time. <laughs> did you perform the Umrah rituals after iftar or before? Before, but I don't understand. Uh, thank you, brother, for your time. I apologize. We have so many calls. Let me get to the next call. Thank you for calling us all the way from India. Thank you, brother. I believe we have another call from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Sheikh. Go ahead, Sheikh. I believe you have a call. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum, brother. How are you? I am Muhammad Naim from KSA. Thank you, Muhammad, for calling us. Tell us a little bit about Ramadan in the KSA. Yes, brother. I was uh, last year, first time came uh, to Saudi Arabia, and uh, I have heard from the lot of sources that whenever you first time go to face Kaaba, Batullah, whatever you pray. It will be accepted, but I can't express my feeling that when I was first time standing in front of Kaaba, I was unable to pray anything. I was just crying and unable to pray anything. I cannot express my feelings, but what should I pray for from my God, from my Allah? And, uh, and again, last uh, two months, uh, sorry, two weeks ago, I went for Umrah in this Ramadan. 
and uh, I was thinking in this hot summer how I can perform Umrah or how I would, I would perform Umrah but you will not believe I performed my tawaf before Akhtar and I was totally relaxed and uh, I didn't feel anything that I am hungry or I feel, didn't feel thirst Masala, thank you so much for sharing those wonderful feelings. Uh, thank you so much for your call, brother. You guys, this is about the end of this episode. I certainly want to take a 30 seconds to share a, a personal story that I have with you guys because this episode is so special about Mecca and Medina. Giving the gift and sending someone to Omrah is very special if you can afford to do so. I remember about three years ago, I came home and I had really wanted to make Omrah. I had never made Omrah before. I, I was dying to really reach Mecca and Medina. And my wife said to me, you know what? I have a surprise for you. This year, inshallah, at the end of March, in a couple months, you're going to be in Mecca and Medina and you will perform Umrah, inshallah. She had purchased this for me as a gift and it was the best gift anybody has ever given me. It was an amazing experience. If you haven't made Umrah, please save some money to do so. It's really, truly, truly uh, special. Brother Akbar, thank you for joining us in the studio. I apologize, I didn't get enough time with you. I really want you to speak more about Mecca and Medina and the differences between the two cities, but perhaps we can have you on another show in the future, inshallah. So thank, thank you, sir. thank you so much for joining us. You guys at home, we're going to another country next tomorrow. Rather, I'm not going to tell you the name of this country, but it has a name that's similar to a word that we might say when you're really, really, really hungry. I'll see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>